Now, clearly, this is not good enough for a, um, a proper mathematics actual exploration of this. So we want a better definition. So on our big diagram over here, okay, let's again experiment with something like this. Put a couple of points on here. Like so. I've got two points. I've got a secant right now. I've got a secant right now. So let's work out what's the gradient of this secant. Let's put some coordinates on here. Let's suppose the x coordinate of this spot is anywhere. So I'm going to call the x coordinate x. I'm going to move forward some amount. But where I'm going is I want this triangle to be really small. So it's as if this secant was like a tangent, okay? And then this line is going to, these points are going to come really close together. So if I went forward a distance h, and choose h as a small number here. So I'm going to move forward this way, h units. What will be the x coordinate of this spot if you move forward h units? It'll be x plus h, right? So remember, I'm calling this x because it can be anywhere, so I'm giving it any, any name. I'm calling this distance, which I want to be a small distance here, I'm just drawing it large so my diagram is visible, um, h. So you go forward from x that many units. Okay, now at the moment what we've got is, well this is a parabola, but I want to consider it for any function, right? So I'm going to call this any function, right? This is why no function notation was so important to us before. At this point here, I've got a run, don't I? There's my run, like that. But I don't have a rise. How am I going to work out rise? What two things, what two pieces of information do I need to work out rise? Yeah, Eric? The y coordinate Yeah, there we go, right there. And that's why they're in our gradient formula, okay? Now, have a look. I've got enough information to describe where these y coordinates are. For instance, have a look at this one here. Okay. I'm looking for the y coordinate at this point. I know what its x coordinate is. I know what its x coordinate is. So what will the y coordinate here be? I've even written it on the board already. The y coordinate, by definition, will be f of x, right? And if at this point my x coordinate is called x, then f of x will be the y coordinate. Okay. What about the top one? This guy up here. What will that be equal to? This will be, yeah, what do you reckon, Drew? Yeah, see up here, right? Again, the y coordinate is f of, but then what are you going to put in? And the answer is you'll put in your x coordinate at this spot, which is x plus h. Now, once you've got your two y coordinates, what do you do with them? You subtract, right? So I've got a run already. Here's my run. What's my rise in this case? It's going to be this guy, take away this guy, right? That's the difference between them. So I've got that top y coordinate, and then I subtract the bottom y coordinate. Do you agree? And that's, that's the rise. OK, so now that I've got rise and I've got run, I can say the gradient of the secant is equal to rise over run, rise over run. I'm going to write this. Here's y2 minus y1. Do you agree? And here is x2 minus x1. Is that OK? That's all that means. It's just the gradient formula. In fact, I, I, it's so important to emphasize that all this is is the gradient formula. I'm going to write y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. That's all this is. It looks fancy because I've been using function notation, but it's just gradient. That's all we're working out. Uh, just like we noticed before, I can simplify the denominator like this. There we go. So what does this mean? Well, if you've got two points, they cut across your function like this, and you can find out its gradient easily enough, just like we did before. Okay. 
but I'm not interested in the gradient of a secant. What I really want is the gradient of a tangent. Because then I can know what is the gradient at any particular point. I can know what's the rate of something if I know what I'm actually comparing. Okay? If only I had a piece of mathematics that allowed me to take this secant and turn it into uh, not something that cuts the function, but something that would just touch the function, like that. If only I had a piece of mathematics that would take this triangle and bring these points so close together that they were more or less the same point. That'd be handy, wouldn't it? What would you call a piece of mathematics that could do that? Limits. 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 That's a funny, um, that's a funny name. How's this going to help us? Okay. Think about this. If you took these two points, if you took these two points and you put them smack bang on top of each other, right? You grabbed him and you moved him along. What would happen to the run? What would happen to the run? The run, the run would approach zero, would it not? Like these guys are going to get closer and closer together. What about the rise? What will happen to that? This will also come down to zero, won't it? Your triangle will stop being a triangle. It will start being a point. Okay? So you can't actually just put in h equals zero. You can't put it in. You can't evaluate it. But you can work out its limit. So the gradient of the secant. If you say what happens to this gradient when this distance here gets really, really tiny, the way we say that in limit notation is the limit as h approaches 0. Right? I'm looking at the run, and I'm trying to make it tiny. So this is the gradient of the secant. You apply the limit to the left-hand side. It's just like any other mathematical operation. So I'm going to apply it to the right-hand side also, like this. Now, just pause before we move any further. That thing on the right-hand side over there, some of you have already seen this before, super, super important. But I want you to understand where it comes from. There are two parts to it. There's this part here and this part here, right? These are the two pieces. Can you remind me where this fraction comes from? What is it? I wrote it in orange to make it really clear. Gradient. It's just gradient. That's all it is. It's just rise over run. So then why? Why do we add this fancy bit to it? What's the point of doing that? Hmm. What's the difference between um, this line and this line? If you looked at the picture, right? If I brought this point over to here, right? see this dotted line, that gradient there, that line? It's going to look like this instead. right? And you don't have a secant anymore. It's not cutting across your function twice or more than twice. All it's doing is it's just touching. It's just touching. So in fact, when you take the limit, you have the gradient not of a secant, but the gradient of that orange line, which is the tangent. And that's what this right-hand side disgusting fraction will give us. Okay? Now, one last piece of information before we actually start to look at it for, say, an example like the one we drew earlier. Okay? Remember we said this is a gradient function, right? Because it can change. You can move this point. Remember we said x can be anything. You could shuffle it around and you would get a different gradient. Okay? So I should use function notation to talk about this because the gradient of the tangent can change, right? So therefore, we introduce this little piece of notation. Here is a function. If you want to talk about the gradient of that function, because this is something we're going to talk about a lot, we want it to be a small adjustment that sort of tells you it's related to this, but it's not the same. So we put a little dash there. Not a 1, it's a dash. I read that as f dash x, and the right hand side hasn't changed. f dash x is the gradient function 
of f of x, right? No matter what f is, I can define f in any way I like.